page 111. No revolutionary party without revolutionary theory. The basis and the structure of the revolutionary party is the revolutionary theory to which it adheres. Without this theory, the party becomes a mere group moving spontaneously or empirically and cannot be that force that is capable of controlling events. Revolutionary theory means clear vision and scientific approach in the understanding and analysis of events and manifestations and consequently the ability to lead. The revolutionary theory that presents all questions relating to humanity and the age in a scientific and revolutionary manner is Marxism. In the history of human endeavor to acquire knowledge, Marxism represents a unique attempt in understanding nature, life, society, and history. Marxism has presented a theory, dialectical materialism, that analyzes and explains nature and its motion and the laws governing this motion through a tangible scientific material approach that is devoid of illusion, superstition, subjective meditation, and imagination, and mere verbal or logical inferences. It has then applied this same tangible scientific material approach to the study of society, the movement of society, and the march of history, historical materialism, stopping particularly before the formation, structure, conflicts, and movements of modern capitalist society, uh, the theory of surplus value and scientific socialism. Through all this, Marxism has presented a dialectical scientific approach that has elevated the study of history, society, and political manifestations to the level of science. As a natural science is our man's means for controlling the phenomena of nature and using them for his benefit, so is Marxism the science that enables man to understand the progress of societies and history and to direct and influence them. Then in completed Marxist scientific efforts by applying the same Marxist method to the study of capitalism in its evolution towards the stage of centralization, monopoly, and colonization, thus explaining all political manifestations and events that attended the beginning of the 20th century. On the basis of Marxism and the socialist scientific approach, he was able to lead with, with success the first socialist revolution in history to draw up its strategy to face its problems and to define the features of the top of the revolutionary organization which led it on the way to victory. In this way, Lenin gave Marxist theory its revolutionary modern applications, so the Marxist Leninism has become the standard of revolution in this period of human history. Like all other scientific theories, this theory is, has passed its validity test on the experimental ground of actuality and practice, and has consequently acquired during this century all its requisite, requisites as a science. The final test of any theory or law is the compatibility of the test with that theory or law, and this is exactly what happened in the case of Marxism. The October Revolution, the revolutions in China, Cuba, and Vietnam, and all revolutionary experiences throughout the world have arisen originally on the strength of this theory. This picture contrasts with the stumbling confusion and collapse of all revolutionary attempts that have not been based on this vision, this theory, and this guide. It is not a mere coincidence that the October Revolution and the revolutions in China, Cuba, North Korea, Vietnam, and the socialist countries of Europe have succeeded and stood firm in the face of imperialism and in overcoming or beginning to overcome their state of underdevelopment against the quasi-paralysis or infirmity characterizing the countries of the third world which are not committed scientifically to the scientific socialist theory as their guideline for planning all their policies and defining their programs. The tangible materialist scientific pursuit of the events and revolutions of this century is the concrete proof of the validity of Marxist theory. Marxism as a revolutionary theoretical weapon depends on the manner in which it is understood on the one hand and its correct application to a particular circumstance or particular stage on the other. The essence of Marxism is the method that it represents in viewing and analyzing things and determining the direction of their motion. Consequently, the revolutionary understanding of Marxism is the understanding of it as a working guide and not as a fixed, rigid doctrine. Lenin and Mao Zedong, and before them Marx and Engels, have recorded on more than one occasion the need for the Marxist view as a working guide and not as a rigid doctrine. The essence of the Marxist view of human society is that it is in continuous motion and continuous change, and consequently any analysis presented by Marxism in respect to any stage or any actuality arises constantly from the old actuality. The invariable factor in Marxism is its dialectical scientific approach in viewing things in their state of continuous motion and change. This method is Marxism in its essence. It is the revolutionary theoretical weapon that enables us to view things scientifically in their state of continuous motion, development, and change. Contemporary capitalism is not on the same. Contemporary capitalism is not the same capitalism of Marx's time, without alter, 
alteration or change, and the class struggle of a backward society is not the same class structure as that of an industrial society. The nationalist manifestation, which the European bourgeois, bourgeoisie tried to exploit to serve its interests, is not the same nationalist manifestation appearing in backward countries where nationalism acquires a revolutionary concept as the framework for the mobilization of enslaved peoples against imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. Understanding Marxism is a manner which enables us to take in all these differences, to take in all these differences, and to benefit from the revolutionary theory provided by the revolutions of this century, and from all the theoretical efforts which have emanated from and enriched Marxism instead of stopping and becoming fossilized at its frontiers, is in fact the scientific Marxist understanding of this theory. The contrary is true of any attitude towards Marxism as a fixed doctrine. Theory is the Marxist con in the Marxist concept is constantly in a continuous dialectical relation with actuality and practice. The fact that it is in dialectical relation with practice means that it is in a state of growth, progress, and modification and not a fixed state. The most dangerous thing that confronts us in our adherence to Marxist theory is understanding it in a mechanical, idealistic manner which deprives it of its ability to explain the living actuality. The benefit which we obtain from Reading and understanding the writings of Marx and Lenin is confined to the limits of the knowledge presented by these writings, whereas true benefit is that which we get when, through our deep assimilation of these writings, we acquire the method presented by Marxist-Leninism in understanding, explaining, and confronting the problems of society, history, and revolutionary action. Marxism, as a tool for an analysis and as a working guide, is the weapon that we seek by acquiring this theory. On this basis, adherence to Marxist Marxism Leninism will not produce any effect unless such adherence results in using this theory and applying it in understanding actual conditions and formulating the working strategy that determines the nature of the stage, the nature of the battle, the definition of the conflicting forces and our view of the movement of this conflict, as well as the thorough comprehension of the concrete circumstances through which we move. By this alone, that is, the application of Marxism Leninism to our actual living circumstances and the battle that we are fighting, our adherence to the Marxist-Leninist theory becomes meaningful and capable of being translated into results. It would be a gross error to imagine that our mere de declaration of adherence to Marxism-Leninism is a fairy wand that will open before us the road to victory. If there are examples of what Marxism-Leninism has represented in respect to certain revolutions, such as those in China and Vietnam, there are corresponding examples where adherence to Marxism-Leninism has not led to anything. The Arab Communist parties that are formally and verbally committed to Marxism-Leninism have not been able to lead the revolution in our homeland because their commitment has been verbal or because they have understood the theory in a rigid, fossilized manner or because they have not been able to apply this theory we theoretical weapon in our actual living circumstances in such a way as to introduce from it a clear view of the battle and a sound strategy for its leadership. Our commitment to scientific socialist theory would be Mere verbiage, mere illusion and escapism, unless this commitment means a mature comprehension of this theory by our leading members in the first place, and our party bases in general. Such comprehension cannot be achieved without a great, steady effort that must be exerted over a long period. On the other hand, the value of this commitment depends on the nature of our understanding of this theory as a tool of analysis, as a method in handling questions of revolutionary action, and as a working guide and not a rigid theory. The acquisition of Marxist-Leninist approach should be the purpose of this effort.